are you? Me? Yeah. Well, I, I consider myself just a simple woman that always wanted to just be happy. And my story started really, um, really not in the right direction. In America, there's all these laws that are supposed to protect us. But what happens is our most vulnerable, most marginalized people are unable to actually enforce them because they can't get legal help. What I realized at an early age is this simple fact causes so much inequality, so much inequity and injustice. And if we could just resolve that, we could dramatically reduce poverty. We could dramatically improve equality and equity in our society. Most organizations spend years raising money and planning before they do anything. But we just put up a sign that said, get legal help, and we were immediately overwhelmed with the need. When you are being thrown out from 10 places saying they cannot help you, we don't have this help, we cannot help you with this one, we have this one, but not this one, and you want to find the help in one place, and you're being thrown to the street saying, no, you, we cannot help you. And to hear, oh yeah, come in, we're going to take you, we're going to help you, we, we got you. I didn't believe it. I said, this is going to be another place that's going to tell me no after they hear me out. We almost never had more than two weeks of cash at a time. In fact, Virginia and I only earned $15,000 each in our first year. And combined with our volunteers, we did 280 cases. I would work from the moment I woke up until I fell asleep seven days a week just trying to get it all done. They hit me so hard that it turned my rig 90 degrees. Totaled it, completely totaled it. She had been harmed by zero fault of her own. She lived in her van and it had been hit in a high speed chase with the police and she was left fronting that bill and not having any place to live at night because that was her home. I collect clothes, blankets, socks to give to him and a couple other homeless friends of mine. Well, you give that to Lewis, okay? This is the rest of David's groceries. He didn't need much today. She wasn't hurt, but she lost all of her property, ended up living in a park. They were telling me they had no fault clause. That means they're not at fault if somebody does damage to your property while they're chasing them. We were able to help her get compensation from the city so she could buy a new trailer and then expunge her criminal record so that she could move into a trailer park and get a job. I had pretty low self-esteem for the fact that I had a felony on my record. I was homeless, basically. I lived in a motorhome. And I thought nobody would want to hire me at my age. They were wonderful to me. They didn't judge me, even when I told them my story. That alone helped me believe that I was still a worthwhile person. What we've essentially built, it's kind of like the first general hospital for legal issues. The general hospital is the place you can go if you don't have any money, if you don't know what your problem is, and they treat all kinds of medical issues. It was very hard for our attorneys because they had to have so much breadth of knowledge in all those areas and really rely on mentors and volunteers to give them more specialized knowledge. So we were very lucky in 2015 when we won the Google Impact Grant and were able to hire people that were more specialized. I had gotten so many no's that to finally get validation, you know, from Google and from them to put this money and for them to say how impressed they were with our work, I just broke down and cried. Claudia came to us in her moment of pure desperation. She was homeless because her husband had called the cops and said that she hit him, which wasn't true. In fact, she was a victim of eight years of abuse. I remember that that day we got an argument and he didn't like what I said. 
So he grabbed me, pushed me through the bed with his knee on top of my chest. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't talk. I couldn't scream. But somehow, he went with his head and knocked me down to the point that I just remember seeing to the side that my daughter was standing right there and she was paralyzed. She was like, <gasps> and when she saw me crying, because I didn't even know that if noises were coming out of my mouth, and she was like this. She was probably like three years old, I would say. And she was already like, oh my gosh, mommy. I could see her face and her you know, mouth calling my name. And I was like, oh no, this is bad. They were so aggressive in order to defend me in court that I would never forget it. And I feel protected. I can't even believe that I'm here today. It was so much that I went through. Every time I walked in those courtrooms and I was shaking, there was trial after trial, court after court, and I was becoming a strong woman. And it was unbelievable because I thought my life was over. And it's just seeing that how it was improving and how things were getting better and better, it's just amazing. You know, I love you, right? Yeah. <laughs> you have so much to me. Hola. Hola, Maria. We believe that injustice is the heart of poverty. And by tackling legal access, we are addressing a major root cause of suffering in society. And when that is scaled up to the millions, imagine the level of human flourishing that we will see. Property crime, domestic violence, poverty, and homelessness would all dramatically decrease. If it wasn't for Virginia and Adrian, I don't think I'd be standing here right now. They don't realize it, but they're the ones that gave me the emotional support to, to be able to go out and say, yeah, I can do this. What's been missing in America is not a lack of laws to protect our civil rights. What's been missing is an inability to enforce those rights by our most marginalized neighbors. Until we provide everyone with equal access to the law, poverty will continue to exist throughout the United States. We started at a place where it was the two of us in a very small room with a bathroom in it, and now we have 25 staff and three locations. Our goal is to make San Francisco the first city in the country with universal access to legal help. And once we've done that, we plan on replicating nationwide until the day when everybody can get the help they need and the law truly belongs to all of us. What I see in 15 years of my kids, I see Dr. Emma Rustrian attending her, her patients, and I see Moises Rustrian as an engineer for cars and building, and I see them happy with their families and have the life that I didn't get when I was that age. Have everything that you possibly can.